Hey guys, and welcome to the Asset Master tutorial video. I'll be covering how to install the add-on, uh, how to set it up and how to use it. It's a pretty quick tutorial since the add-on is very simple, but it is very useful. So first thing, when you're gonna download the zip file, put it somewhere on your computer where you know you won't delete it and leave it as a zip. And for this add-on, what you're gonna need to do is also create another folder, just an empty folder in a pretty permanent location on your computer. So I've created mine in just my C drive and I call that Blender Asset Master folder. Uh, with those two things done, we can now open up Blender, navigate over here to the top left, press Edit, Preferences, and then on this little sidebar, select Add-ons, Install, and locate the zip file. You want to check this box and drop down this menu. Over here, we're gonna point it to the folder that we've just created. So in my case, that's my C drive, and then my Blender Assets Master folder, and we're gonna click Accept, and that's it for the setup part. Uh, so we can now close this down and open up our end panel and find the add-on over here. I have already split the view over here to have my asset browser. You can do this by hovering your mouse in the bottom corner so you get this cursor and you just drag out. Over here, select asset browser. And if you don't see this menu, just press T. Um, now you're gonna notice with the add-on, you have a couple functions. You can mark your assets, you can clear assets. You can mark objects, materials, collections, note groups, and selected objects. The same goes for the clear assets. You can load previews, and over here it says file not saved. Once a file is saved, this says save and add to the path. Over here you have a quick way to navigate back to this folder, where you can change your master folder in case you're changing it up. And over on the asset browser, uh, once you have a couple added, like myself here, you want a quick way to remove them or to rename them. So I've added this button over here, which just opens up the file path menu uh, for you right away. So you can rename them, add your own, or delete the ones that you're not using anymore. We're just gonna save this file, just so I can show, show to you how it works. Uh, for that, we're just gonna put together a very basic scene, just a Suzanne, and we're gonna give it a quick material, just any material, just so we have some color. Let's also give the floor a material. So I have a super basic scene, <laughs> nothing really beautiful going on, but we're gonna save this file and call it example. I'm just, it doesn't really matter where you save these files, so you just save them where you normally work on your projects. The location of the original blend file does not matter for the asset master, uh, since when you do save it, it actually moves or creates a copy of it into the asset master uh, folder that we created before. So I'm just gonna put it on my desktop and save it. And you're gonna notice the button stops being red and you can now save and add your path. We're gonna mark all the objects and materials in this project and you're gonna see they have no previews. That's why we want to load them and it's gonna load and render all the materials and objects in your scene. We don't want the dot stroke that come by default so we're gonna just clear that asset and this is now our asset library. We're now gonna click save and add path. It's gonna say success and we confirm that. Now with that done, we can now close this instance of Blender. And for example, if I were to work on another project and I needed those exact assets, again, I would just split my view, get the asset browser, and it's automatically added to your file path. So I can just go ahead and reuse those same materials and everything that I worked with uh, in the previous project. Now this comes in really handy when you're working on an actual scene, uh, where say you've modeled something and you wanna reuse those assets in your future projects. Uh, you just go mark, select what you want to mark, confirm. In this case, I've already um, rendered all the previews, but I'll show you how it works. If you just press load asset previews, it's going to go through all the objects and then through all the materials and give you a preview of each. Um, this doesn't take long. Uh, sometimes materials with displacements take a couple seconds longer to load. Um, but overall, no matter the size of your project, this should still be fairly quick. Okay, so with that done, again, we're gonna notice that our camera also got marked. So I will just clear that as an asset and I see we have an armature here that we also don't need. So I'm gonna just clean up my library over here. Of course, you can also catalog it or make your own categories for each of these. I'm not gonna do it for this project, but the categories and everything will translate into your asset libraries. So we're gonna say save and add path and that's successfully saved. So if I start a new project now, um, over here, it's already going to be added. Over here, the project was called House, so the library is called House. Uh, and you're going to see that all of the assets are right over here, uh, so we can just go ahead and use them. 
So this tool comes in really handy when you're working on multiple projects, uh, you're creating your own things, you're mashing together assets, and you're creating something new that you then want to reuse in another project. Or if you just want to build yourself a big asset library that you can use for your creative work, uh, it's a really quick way uh, to handle your assets and materials and also note groups, collections, uh, and everything like that in a quick way without having to worry about the actual file or the original file in its location. So even if I were to actually go ahead and delete, uh, for example, this file that we've created at the beginning uh, with the Suzanne and the, the blue uh, material, blue and green material, I can still start a new project and I will still have that example asset browser uh, or asset library that we've created before. Now the reason for that and how that works is when you press mark, it creates this folder inside the asset master folder uh, that names it just like how the project was named and creates a copy of the blend file in there. And the good thing about this is it doesn't do a file save as because that actually creates a copy in the new location, but then also opens the copy and then you're working on that copy. Uh, so by making a completely separate copy, uh, that way you're maintaining the file in that state in that folder. Um, so you could also use this as a backup tool uh, for your assets for a specific state of your project that you're working on. Um, so yeah, it's not just an asset library tool, it's a general productivity enhancer. Uh, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I've used it in a lot of my projects and it's come in handy many times. Oh, and again, just like before, uh, if this builds up too much or you find you're not using your file paths uh, or your asset libraries that much, go ahead, open the file path and just find it and over here you can quickly remove it. Okay, so that about covers the Asset Master add-on. Uh, it's a simple tool, but I think it's a very useful one. Um, let me know any suggestions that you might have down in the comments or in our Discord community, uh, the links to which are both down below. Um, so yeah, this add-on is also part of our Altap Studio add-on. So if you have that, you can just update it and get it uh, already built in into the full studio version. All the features that will be added to the studio version will also be added to this standalone version. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, thank you guys for watching and hope you have a nice day.